Hey golfers and welcome back to the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. It is the 15th episode of the show and we have back one of our favorite guests, uh, Larry Bobka is back um, in the studio today and uh, you know, not for no reason, not that we won't have you on for no reason, um, but Larry is back because he's got some new wedges that he has designed, created, and we've got him here. We've got to talk about them. Uh, part of the handmade sticks um, sort of releases, if you will. And right. so um, I guess, first of all, Larry, we've we got some here, so we can kind of talk about the design and stuff. But, um, you know, you've been designing clubs now as part of handmade sticks for, about, what, like a, a, over a year now, is it? Yep. Pretty right. close to yeah, that. Pretty so, close. Um, you've got putters, you've got irons, and now wedges. And yep. so, uh, I mean, talk about the inspiration to kind of get started on these. Well, you know, um, kind of started originally with some forge wedges and handmade sticks, you know, a little bit expensive, hand ground, whatever. And then, you know, came up with uh, the LB1 irons. Well, as, as things go, all of a sudden, you know, the text messages and the Instagram messages yeah. start coming going, well, are you going to make wedges too? And I will tell you that some of it is a little bit, um, it's a little bit selfish on my part. Um, I've always played a different 48 degree pitching wedge than the set wedge. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, you know, back in the days when I worked for Wilson and before that I used an old JP50, which, you know, now would be considered a, okay. now would be considered a gap wedge. Yeah, uh, You know, and then, you know, a Titleist played the Vokey 48. And so, you know, so first of all, I'm kind of sitting there going, all right, well, I got to, I got to do a, I got to do a pitching wedge and maybe, yeah. I'll, maybe I'll just do it for myself. And, but then, you know, like I said, I started to get some requests and when are you going to do this? And I said, okay, well, let's just, you know, let's do 48, 52, 56 and 60. Yeah. So we got all four right here. Yep. Um, Starting with the 48, and, and I got to say, as I as I take a look at them, it seems like kind of similar to the irons where you just have, it's a pretty classic look. There's nothing, you know, it's going to distract the player. It's a pretty classic look that is kind of simple, but obviously it's uh, nothing that's tough to look at either. I mean, it's very pleasing uh, aesthetically. Well, it's kind of me. I'm kind of simple. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, honestly, if you're if you're looking at a golf club and you're putting a golf club down, especially when it comes to an iron or a wedge, do I want any distractions? Do I want to see any weird, you know, you really don't. I mean, all you want to do is really concentrate on the on the golf swing you're going to make. Um, so, you know, if you kind of look at the irons, you kind of look at these. I mean, there's there's nothing simple. There's no. There's no funny weights. There's no, I mean, I, I just look at it as if I'm going to have confidence. I mean, I, I played yesterday at Chaska Town Course, and you're standing on the, you know, you're standing on the fourth hole out there, yeah. which is a little par three over the, over the gunch or whatever yeah. you want to call it. And pin was back left, so there's a chance that if you make, don't make a very good swing at it, you're going to hit it in, you're going to hit it down into the creek. Yeah. Well, you know, do I want a club that that one? You know, the offset looks weird, or the or the leading edge looks weird, or whatever. You know, I just want to put that down there and just you know try to aim about 15 feet of the flag and just try to hit a little draw in there. Mm -hmm. You know, I managed to knock it about 12 feet short yesterday, so that worked out. That, yeah. that I mean, worked that, out on fine. That, on that hole, it's a good shot. Yeah, it's a good shot. Mm -hmm. But you know, that to me is that to me is is what. And I don't want to say my golf clubs are, you know, eventually going to be classics. But if you look at all the classics, if you look at the old Wilson wedges and the Wilson irons, you look at the old, the old McGregor stuff. I mean, it, it's very simple, clean lines. And, mm -hmm. and to me, you know, when you're designing it, does, you know, in this day and age of, you know, titanium weights and all kinds of multi-material, you know, it, it, it maybe seems a little simple. But golf's really just a game about tee it up, hit it, go find it, hit it again, yeah, get it in the hole. Yeah, you're just kind of chasing after the simplicity of the game instead yeah. of, you know, because you're right, today it has become uh, complex and multifaceted. And you have, you know, wedges that used to be the most classic, you know, single material club right. um, for decades and decades. You know, right. you've got, you know, 
cavity badges and you have tungsten waiting in there and you have everything else going yeah. on with these manufacturers and there's not they're not doing that for no reason right. but you know a purist um, or you know someone that enjoys the simplicity of it wants just nothing else to think about but hit the ball in the hole that's kind of what I imagine kind of the player you're you're looking at with these. well yeah and you, you know when you really go down to a wedge it, 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 it the simplest form I mean you know Cleveland just came out with some new wedges, some kind of cavity back. They're, mm -hmm. they're kind of game improvement wedges. And, you know, I talked to Roger Cleveland, and Roger goes, he goes, man, he goes, wait till you see the 60. He goes, the 60 looks great. So from the top, I mean, it just looks like a regular, I mean, it looks like a classic wedge. Now, did they put a little cavity in there and, you know, try to help players out a little yeah. bit and a bigger sole? And basically it's the sure out where you can go in there and just, you know, splash it out of there. Yeah. But it has to look good mm -hmm. to want to play it, to want to put that in the bag, you know. And for myself, I'll, I'll be very honest. I mean, I have a very hard time, and, and I have done it in the past, working at, working at Wilson and, and Titleist, and you make a golf club, and in about four or five years you go back and you're like, oh, my gosh, what was I thinking on that one? I mean, you do. I mean, that's just the, that, you know, that's kind of the perfectionist in you, and, you know, you learn from your past designs. But, you know, I'm kind of in the point in my life and career where it's like, you know, if I'm going to put these in the bag and somebody, like yesterday, you know, we're waiting on the third hole and a guy pulls out, pulls out, my pitching wedge and looks at it and he goes, oh, you know, I saw you doing some new wedges. He goes, this looks really good. You know, I don't want somebody pulling it out going, this doesn't look so good. Right. You know, we're putting it back in the bag going, yeah. he doesn't really know what he's doing. Yeah. You know, that, I mean, to me that, you know, I, I, I think I'm at the point after, you know, 40 plus years in the business that I, I want somebody to pick it out and go, man, I got to get one of those. Yeah. Well, and you also just have a good idea of what people like to look at the golf club too, you know, you're not, and I mean, clearly with the, the design of your irons, the design of your putters, um, and now the wedges as well, these wedges, it's clearly you're, you're going after what people want to look at. And obviously the, the performance in it itself, by the way, there is a uh, YouTube review out on the channel right now that Michael performed for us right. uh, as well with these, but uh, so you can check that out. But I wanted to mention too, the, the shape of the head in terms of, because you see now, towards that toe area, do you right. see some um, manufacturers will go a little more squared off yep. or, uh, and then you have some kind of, what I would categorize this as a little bit more rounded. And so uh, what kind of went into the decision that was, or is it just something on the design of it? Is that just what you like to look at? Is that is it a performance thing? What was kind of going well, through there? Well, if you look at it, and really uh, my design influences come from, you know, learning from Bob Mandrella at Wilson. And Wilson had a much had a rounder, mostly rounder shape in their wedges, and he always felt that you know if you kind of split the wedge in half, that the bottom part of the toe and the top part of the toe should look the same. Mm, so yeah. it is a rounder look, yeah. you know, where you see some wedges where they kind of pull off the mm -hmm. top a little bit. Um, I, I just like that, and and to me, it's if if you have that, and then you kind of have a semi. A semi-straight leading edge. Yeah. Um, you know, it fits the eye very well. Now, you know, there's there's always people that come back and say, "Oh my gosh, you know, it, you know, the it's too rounded." Well, that's everybody's preference. I mean, yeah. trying to make a golf club, trying to make a what we consider a stock golf club for everybody, that's impossible. Yeah, it's an impossible yeah. task. I mean, what you do is you take all the information. You know, if, if if I get 85% of the people with this shape, I've done a That's great job. That's pretty darn good. I've done a great yeah. job. I've done yeah. a fantastic job. Because mm -hmm. the other 15%, well, I, I like I like the toe. I like the toe being square. I like this being sharper, a rounder, whatever. Well, then, you know, I, I can't, you can't do, you can't do a club for everybody. Yeah, right. So, so um, you know, I just went out from a standpoint of the shape, leading edge bounce offset you know what's going to be what's going to be the most appealing to one me first of all <laughs> right okay and secondly what's going to be appealing to the people that have bought a set of irons sure you know what are they going to mm, see yeah if they're going to you know a, a great friend of mine peter booth who plays 
out at Goat Hill in, in California. Well, you know, he bought a set of irons and, you know, he, um, he got one of the first sets of wedges, you know, and he, he sent me a note and he goes, man, he goes, these are, these absolutely complement the irons. Yeah. Well, here's a guy Which that, there's has a guy to be that a worked, consideration when you're yeah. designing them. And here's a guy that worked on tour for Callaway for years and, you know, mm -hmm. he's got a good eye for golf equipment and, right. you know, so to me, that's a compliment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, some a peer in the industry looks at it and goes, "Hey, you did a great job." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's really cool. And, yeah. and I I always see your Instagram where you have people taking pictures, tagging them, irons or wedges, or, right? You know, whatever it might be. And you're you're going all over the globe with with these too. I mean, you got overseas a little bit now. I yeah, mean, we got some overseas. Yeah. I you know I I get people all the time going, "Hey, can we ship them to Singapore? Can we ship them yeah. where or whatever?" And you know, poor James Tracy. All I do is all I do <laughs> all I do is pass them all off. I go, you know, Instagram. You know, James James dot Tracy at SecondSwing dot yep. com. He'll let him figure it and out. He, 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 <laughs> and he does it. And he does want. You know, our customer service does a wonderful job. Yeah. And he does a great job making sure everybody gets taken care of and gets products shipped around the world. So, yeah, it's really cool. You know, it's it, it's kind of fun to uh, to sit back and and enjoy you know, kind of enjoy the success. And, and uh, I had my uh, my youngest stepdaughter was in last week with her boyfriend and they wanted to play golf and, you know, kind of throw some sets together and whatever. And and she's like, these, these are really nice. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a compliment yeah. from the family. There so. you go. <laughs> you got the professional and then the yeah. family compliments. Yeah, the family comp So I'm doing yeah. well. Yeah, exactly. Um, so now the lofts you said 48 52 56 60 at, right. that, at this time there's no other no loss, there's no correct. other lofts but you can you can make some you can make some adjustments oh, yeah. in the set i mean honestly now you know i either play i either play a short set with the 48 and the 56 Yo, in the bag okay, yep. or if i'm playing a fuller set which is still not 14 clubs it's closer to 14 yeah clubs. closer but i'll i have i've actually taken my 52 and bent it to 54. So I'm 48, okay. 54, 60. Yep. Okay. You know, and you see that on tour all, oh, the, all time. the time. You know, uh, Aaron Dill's a great friend. It was, you know, during 3M and, you know, he's working on wedges. I mean, you can't, you know, you physically can't make every loft. Well, you make every loft by bending them. But on the other side of that, too, is I always like, if you're bending them a little bit stronger, you put a little more offset into them. I, I, think, I think a good wedge should have some offset yeah you know oh, yeah. the best players in the world you look at the best wedge players in the world and you go back to my wilson days and you know seeing guys like bernhard langer and hale yep. Irwin and tom kite and seve ballesteros i mean there was always offset in those wedges it's kind of you know it's kind of morphed where it's gotten a little bit straighter and i don't know honestly drew if it it's because so much is being designed on a CAD right now that it's it's easier to be a little straighter with less mm. offset, you know, because you start, you know, I remember years back at Wilson, we're, we're starting to design stuff on CAD. In there, they'd be like, the engineers would be like, well, well, what's that radius? I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah. We just, we just put it on the wheel and went like that, and that's what it, well, oh, okay, well, I guess we have to measure it. I'm like, yeah, you do. Because I don't, I, you know, I, I don't know what this radius, I don't want this, you know, it, it's just, it's just a look thing. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so ultimately, um, you know, I wanted to put a little bit more, a little bit more offset into these. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so now I kind of wanted to also ask you about the, the sole, mm -hmm. the, the kind of the grind there, because it's a, you know, it's, it's a, it's a design of a grind that I've seen before, but it's, yep. you kind of got a little bit of relief there. Yeah. So... Uh, talk to me about that. Looks like some release sort of on the back of the sole there. So what kind of went into designing the, the sole that way? Okay, so it's, it's you know, it's a fairly full sole wedge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back in the day, we're going to go back, we're going to go back, you know, almost 40 years back to Wilson, you know, and the players would come into the Western Open. And back in the day, most of the wedges, everybody had full soles. And if there was any custom grinding, it was like, player would take the take a finish wedge and then grind it how they would like yeah. it. Well, so basically pretty much 
all the best wedge players would take and take a full sole Wilson wedge and then put this grind on it. Yeah. Okay. So they still wanted, you know, they still wanted to have that high point. So if I go in the bunker with this 56, I still have max, I still have max bounce. Yep. Okay. But now I've given myself some relief that when I open it up on a firmer lie, it's not going to, it's not going to come out. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, the problem is I think some of the wedges now, and it's no disrespect to, you know, to, to Voke and Aaron Dill or Roger Cleveland, but all the, there's a lot of wedges designed based on the conditions that the tour players play, mm -hmm. okay, which is very firm. Bunkers are, bunkers are firm. They don't have a lot of sand in them, okay? We don't play in those conditions all the time. Maybe every once in a while. Yeah. I mean, even out at TPC Twin Cities, you know, the bunkers were fairly soft. And, you know, I walked the practice round with Lucas, and he was hitting most of his bunker shots with his 56 because he needed to open up and create more bounce because their bunkers are a little bit softer yeah. than most of the tour bunkers. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, everybody looks and sees what's on, sees what, you know, gets posted and a guy's playing a four degree or he's playing, you know, bounce is your friend. Yeah. I mean, bounce is the thing that keeps this club moving through the turf. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you need it. Yeah. You know, but here I, I've got it, but I've also got a point where I don't have a full sole where I might run into trouble on a firmer lie yeah. off the turf. And it just, to me, it just, it, it gives a, it gives a versatility. Now, you know, I'm, I, and I've had people, well, you know, can you take more here? Can you, you know what, if you want to buy them and take a little more, go for it. Yeah. You know what? But I think from a, from a standpoint of a, of a universal soul for okay. most people, again, that 85%, this is going to work. Yeah. This is going to work really, really well. Because, yeah, like you mentioned, you know, this is the sole that, you know, I guess if you were going for the most type of play out there where this, right. these wedges could right. fit into the bag of any golfer that right. uses, their wedges in, uses their wedges in a variety of ways. Yeah. Um, and I like that you mentioned, you know, the, the ability to open the face on a thin lie, right? Because especially up here where you know, it, it can get pretty soft sometimes. Yep. Or like in June when we had, didn't have yep. rain for like three right. weeks in a row. You know, it can get pretty firm. And most times in Minnesota, if you're playing golf, you're playing a variety of turf conditions throughout the summer. Um, yep. And then, of course, there's five months where you don't play any golf. And then you get back in the spring and it's soft as a sponge. Well, in June and now all of a sudden we've had rain the last few right. days. Golf course, you know, played Chaska yesterday. It was a lot softer yeah. than it's been all summer. Right. And you don't have the luxury of you know, going to the tour truck and grabbing a different grind right. or grabbing a, you right. know, getting the, putting on the grinder and shaving us yep. a little bit of uh, grind off. So this is the sort of the most versatile, in your opinion, the most versatile shape for players that are playing different courses, playing different conditions every week, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, now on the d design of uh, the logo on the back or like any other, you know, is that just kind of more back to the simplicity of things? Yeah, like, we're just back to the simplicity of the, you know, the handmade sticks. Yeah. You know, we got the loft on there. We got, of course, we got the LB1 on there and, you know, just, just, you know, it's it just, just gets clean. the job done. It just gets the job done. Yeah. It just tells you, I mean, it tells you everything that you need to know yeah. about this club and, you know, in, you know, some people, I had a, a couple of people, well, why didn't you put like, you know, pitching wedge. Oh, sure. Pitching wedge, sand wedge, lob wedge. You get a, a lot of requests for something like that? I, a little bit. Yeah. But in my opinion now, with lofts going as crazy, see, there might be somebody that bought a set of Callaway Mavericks or Rogues that yeah, are stronger true. loft and irons. Well, that 48 might be their gap wedge. Right, right. So I don't, I don't want to limit... I don't want to limit them going, well, that says P on it. I can't use that as a gap. Well, yeah, but it fits as your gap yeah. wedge. You know, I mean, I, I've gotten to the point. I mean, you know, Aaron Roth, another one of our great fitters, we were, we were having this discussion the other day, and it's like, you know, really we're about at the point where all we need to do is just put the distance somebody hits a club right, yeah. on their, on, on their the arm. Distance, just yeah. engrave, you know, 
I'm, I'm playing yesterday, and we're, we're standing on a hole, and my buddy's got a 7-iron out, and I got a 5-iron out, and he's like, why are you hitting 5? I said, well, your 7-iron's got 27 degrees of loft. My 5-iron's got 28. You got you got a stronger <laughs> loft at 7-iron than I have a 5. You yeah. Know, we're basically hitting the same club. That's where I you get that all the time when you're playing, and I know you just experienced it, but what, if you're playing with your friends or whatever, and they ask you what club, you're hitting as a way of sort of gauging the decision for themselves probably not the best way to do it because chances are the lofts that you're playing Absolutely. are pretty different yeah. especially if one of you's purchased a set recently where in the last two three years the lofts have gotten very strong well i mean somebody just somebody just posted somebody just posted on instagram well the 1991 um seven iron dci Okay. It was 36 degrees yeah. aloft, and it was 36, uh, 36 and a half inches long. So a half inch, basically a half inch shorter than the current stand, okay. quote, stand. And that was, that was standard then. Yeah, that was standard then. So that's, you know, that's 30 years ago. Yeah. So now you take the new T200, well, it's 30 and a half degrees aloft, so it's five and a half degrees stronger, and it's a half inch longer. Yeah. You know? And, and again, no disrespect to anybody designing golf clubs, but at the end of the day, you know, we've just, we've smashed these lofts together. Yeah. And, you know, I just like the idea of a traditional set of golf clubs. Mm -hmm. You know, here's a lot. I don't care the number. My ego doesn't tell me, and especially at 63 years old, I could care less if you're hitting nine iron yeah. and I'm hitting five iron. Because you know what, Drew, I'm going to hit five iron closer than your nine iron. You know what, I believe that too. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it, that that doesn't that doesn't bother me in the least. But you know, you have to have gapping. To me, it's yeah. all about. To me, it's all about if I'm if I'm really going to help somebody play better golf with one with designs or fitting, or you know the gophers mm -hmm. that I work with. You know, you, you've got to spread that bag. So when you're standing out there. You have a clear idea of one, the shot you need to hit, and what club you need to pull to hit that shot. I mean, I can't tell you the times that people come in and, you know, at the top end of their bag at, you know, say three wood to four hybrid. I mean, there's barely any distance yeah. difference. You know, well, how you doing at the, well, you know, my wedge plays not very good. Well, you only got two wedges in your bag. Yeah, they go from. Pitching wedge that's forty two degrees to like a fifty two degree and a sixty or something. Yeah. And well, now you're gaps. now you're hitting now you're hitting your pitching wedge one hundred and thirty yards. Yeah. And you're driving it a hundred two hundred and thirty yards. You got a hundred <laughs> yards and you got nine clubs in there. Yeah. You got one hundred and thirty yards and you got two. Yeah. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Right. You know. So I think one of the things that we do really well at Second Swing is try to get people to understand that. And when people asked about when I made my you know, hey, you're going to make, like, hey, you want a stronger loft set of my irons? Just buy them and on the four iron, just write five. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, if, if, your, ego, if your ego says that you right. need to do that, <laughs> just, just, write, five, just yeah. write five iron on there. Or even like, I mean, nowadays, it's almost like we should, with a new set of irons, and I think like Ben Hogan did this for a while, but instead of putting the they number put of the irons, lofts on put there. the loft on the sole. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's a 34 yeah. degree club, that's just says 34 like yeah. just like with these wedges it, you know unfortunately people you know they have a hard time gathering their head around yeah that right but i you know, you know one through nine or two no, through nine I, is so I, simple but ultimately it's about how far do you hit it because you know i yeah. mean you know there's you and i talking we got our camera guy over yeah. here we all have different ball speeds yep so what does it matter you know a seven iron to me is a different seven iron than you and a different seven iron than his. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter how far that seven iron goes. Is it the appropriate is it the appropriate club for the appropriate distance yeah. you need to hit it? Right. That's all that matters. And that's where, you know, that's where I, you know, was very traditional in the lofts of my iron, very traditional in the lofts of my wedges. You know, there's in again, if you you know, if you're playing a stronger lofted set and you want a gap wedge, buy the 48. There you go. You know, buy, buy a set of 48, 52, and, and 56. 56. Yeah. You know, or if you're playing a traditional set, you know, 52, 56, and 60. 
And uh, what is, like, let's say someone is listening to this or watching this now, and they, you know, are interested in the wedges, they want to set, but, like, you know, they might, their current loft configuration might be, you know, 50, 56, 62, or it might be, you know, something that's a little bit different. Right. What's the process then? Can they bring them into the store and just, it's just quick bend, or how, how long does that process right. take? Yeah, we you, bring them in the store, it? quick bend, or, you know, again, we'll jump on James Tracy one more time, yeah. you know, in his group. You know, call up and say, "Hey, I, you know, I want the wedges. I want the wedges built, and I want them built at 50, 56, and sixty-two. Yeah, perfect, yeah. easy. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, simple. I love that. Yeah, it's simple. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know, that's that's the that's the beauty of kind of making the even lofted wedges yeah. because you can play, you can go to the odd lofts really easy. You can, yeah, they're easily like I said, you know, I've got a I got a fifty-two that that's at fifty-four. Yep. You know, there's still enough offset in there that when I make it 54, adds a couple degrees of bounce, but doesn't hurt me a, yeah. doesn't hurt me a bit to do that. You're right, and it's a very common thing I know on tour where guys oh, yeah. frequently will adjust, say, a 54 degree wedge to 55. Right. Or actually, Lucas Glover does the same thing. He was what 50. Well, he's, play, to he's playing. He's playing. A, he's playing a 52, a 56, and a 60 from Cleveland, the new okay. RTX six. Yep. Okay. But he found out because of his gapping, so the 52 is bent to 51. Okay. The 56 is at 56. The 60 is at 61. Okay. So it gives him it gives Five him a better degrees, gapping. Yep. You know, and he plays his ZX7s a degree weak. Yep. Because he always tends to de loft clubs as he hits them. So, you know, there's a perfect example where you look at you look at the three wedges in his bag, and only one of them is really the loft of what it is. Yeah. Well, that's just like that's just like having a set of irons. You know, you got a five iron. What's somebody's five iron loft? I mean, you might have one tour player playing it at 25, and you might yeah. have another guy playing it at 29. Yeah. To them, it says five on the club, but it's it says performing five on the club. You got a completely you know, different loft. Colin Morikawa, you know. Take Taylor May guys. Colin Morikawa is stronger left. I think he's 25. Yeah. Tiger Woods is 29. Very different clubs. Very they different, go very different distances. Very different clubs. Very, but very different swings. Yeah. You know, so Colin's kind of a cutter and put spin on where yeah. Tiger, Tiger, tends to deal loft and compress it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's and it's fascinating how all that works together with wedges because I know in fittings in the tour van and then obviously now with. You know, it's a, it's a whole discussion when you get fit for irons, most of the time, if there's time in the, you know, allotted uh, amount of time for the fitting, they, our fitters will ask about wedges and your right. gapping and making sure that you don't have a 42 degree pitching wedge. Right. And then a 52 right. degree gap wedge or something like that. Right. Um, and so <clears throat> I like that you incorporated four different options here that can very easily just be bent with a tweak if needed. And yeah. anybody that has an iron set now, I mean, these can seamlessly fit in with any iron set, let alone the LB ones. Yeah, and they can be, they can be, they like I said, it can be pitching wedge through sixty degree, or it can be gap wedge through sixty degree. Right. Can be, it can, you know, depending on what you need and what you want. You know, one of the big things we do in fittings is, especially if if someone's getting a new set of irons, okay. Now, if they're walking out the door with that set of clubs, say that we found a set that works really well, well, you've got that pitching wedge right there. So yep. then they can hit the pitching wedge, or some of the sets come with gap wedges, and then you can easily do a wedge fitting. A lot of my fittings, if they're getting a new set of irons that, you know, hey, maybe are half inch long, inch long, or whatever, you know what? Let's get those irons first. Let's come back. Let's When we get that new pitching wedge, then let's go ahead and, and build the wedges around that new pitching wedge because we're going to see how far it goes. Because I guarantee you, most of the time, people tend to pick up a little bit of yardage. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit straighter. Most of the time, we, we tend to add spin to their yeah. golf games. Most people don't spin the ball Which enough is with most their of the wedges. Time it's needed, yeah. Yeah. So, so now you have an opportunity to fit some wedges and have people hit some wedges and go, wow, okay, that you know that this is what I really need and this yeah. this makes sense rather than trying to do it all at once and you yeah. know and sometimes you know and arguably I mean even though I've done it for a long time sometimes if you don't have it 
the pitching. It's a shot in the dark. Yeah. And it might not be you have to buy a whole new set of wedges. It could be, hey, maybe you have 50, 56, 60 in your bag right, right. now or whatever it might be. Right. Various brands, but that doesn't matter. We can still come in and see what that looks like for your iron set and match it up with your wedges and bend it if needed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had a guy, I had a guy on, I had a guy on, uh, had a guy on Tuesday that brand new set of irons, hit them great. Well, I, it just, you know, I struck, well, he had a 52 and it was pretty old and yeah. not very good. And I won't mention the manufacturer's name, but <laughs> it didn't match up for it. His 56 and his 60 were fine. So yeah. all we did was add, we added a 50. Yeah. So now he's got a 50 because he hits his, he hits his new iron pitching wedge a little farther. Oh, sure. And then we just took that 56 and bent it to 55. So now he's at 50, 55, and 60. There you go. Simple yeah. as that. You know, that takes 10 minutes. Yeah. So, I mean, we could, we could sit here and talk about the importance <laughs> of gapping all day, right? Because, well, yeah. I, so I, cause right now, and I know we've had this, this talk too, because I had, um, you know, I'm at 45 pitching wedge, 50, 54, 58. Right. Um, and then I've, before this year, I, uh, I bent the 58, 59, um, just for the sake of right. a little bit of gapping issues I had with 54 and 58. But um, it, it's it's something that the detailed golfer should be paying attention to, and it will help you if you're. It, and it will well it will cost you shots if you're not paying attention to it, and it's it's slipping your mind, and suddenly you have a distance that you don't have a comfortable swing with. Well. I to me, and the reason I did 48, 52, 56, and 60, one, they're, they're known loss. Yeah. The other thing is you don't really ever want to have your wedges any closer together than four degrees. Right. If you're closer than four degrees. I mean, honestly, for me, at my deteriorating club head speed was... <laughs> Is the best way to describe it. I love it. how you kind of dance around <laughs> that, that, that being slow, subject being, every time. being old yeah. and slow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I like, I actually like about five to six degrees yeah. now because it gives me a better, it gives me a better number for the for the wedges because otherwise, you know, for me, fifty and fifty four. If I went fifty, fifty four, fifty eight, they're just too close. They're together. too close together. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just don't, I don't, I don't create that speed anymore in trying to manufacture golf shots. Then the worst thing is then you're standing out there and you're going, okay, all right, I know I need to hit this shot, but which wedge am I going to hit now? I'd rather have a clear point that, hey, mm -hmm. this is the wedge I need to hit. And that's where, you know, with a 40, with that 48 in the bag compared to my LB1 nine iron, is there a little bit more gap between that one and my net? Absolutely. There's a, there's probably about eight yards more than if I have the traditional pitching wedge from the set in there. Yeah. Because that's got a little lower center of gravity. It spins a little bit more. So, but I don't mind that. I don't mind having gap because sure. I've always I've always found through my golfing, is, geez, the club I hit the last was, the least was. My nine iron. Yeah. I hit eight irons. Well, that's right. Individual irons. You might not even use one during a yeah, round. Yeah. I hit eight know? irons and I hit eight irons and I hit pitching wedges and it's like, you know, and that's where we can go on the less than 14. Yeah. Less than 14 too. clubs. But you just find that you need, you know, let's put that proper gapping. I would rather have that go a little bit shorter to a specific yardage that I can hit it and it, and it works out nicely. Yeah. And I will tell you that specific yardage right now, it's not, it's not very, it's not very good. It's you know, it's 108 yards. I mean, I hit that yeah. 108 yards. That's, that's all I can do these days. No, that's and that doesn't matter because I know from 108 yards you're going to hit this yeah. 48 degree wedge a yeah. lot closer but than then I'm going to hit my 58 But then I get degree. 12 yard, but then I have 12 yards between that and the that and the nine iron, and it works perfectly. Yeah, you know. And then I have another 12 yards onto the eight iron, which works perfectly. So, you know, it, it, it's really about gapping. It's really about tweaking what you do. You know, the whole thing was just to have a complement, a complementary set of wedges mm -hmm. to a set of irons that, you know, thank you everybody out there that's bought them, that have been, you know, very successful.
yeah. for for second swing and handmade sticks and you know it, it's really cool to to get those pictures that people send me and you know hey they're they're over here they're in England they're doing this they're doing you know yeah. to see people playing them around and and that was the whole idea you know the whole idea was to make a set of golf clubs to make a set of wedges you know that that price point wise somebody can go out and go you know what and I really want to try these. I really enjoy them. And it's not going to cost me two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars for a set of irons. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I can go play some golf with some pretty cool blades and hit it. And you know, it was uh, in fact our our president Russ Higgins was out at Chaska yesterday, and I w I was pulling after nine holes. I pulled because I needed my power cord for my phone because I have to play golf with music. And oh just, yeah, it's just the, I agree. So I, my battery was running low, and he, he walked by my bag, and he goes, hey, nice clubs. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> you know? what I would do, too. I yeah. do the same thing. Yeah. yeah, he goes, you know, but that's, you know, and, and I like that, and I like people pulling them out of the bag. I mean, I want, I want people with the wedges and with the irons to just, you know, pride of ownership. That, yeah. you know, I bought these. These are cool, and are, are they the easiest things to hit? No, the wedges are the wedges are probably easier to hit than the irons. Sure, sure. I yeah. can tell you that right now because I mean, if you look at it, I mean, it's it's a pre pretty traditional wedge design. I mean, you're yeah, gonna, it is. You know, wedge. If you if you look, wedges really haven't changed much since, you know, the fifties. Yeah. The shape of a good wedge really hasn't changed much. You know, there's been some different technology. There's been different. Yeah, there's subtle there's things there. like the the round the yeah, roundness. Yeah, yeah, but there's little but, things. Yeah, but there's you know a wedge has been pretty much a wedge yeah. for for you know we're going on seventy years yeah. here of what they look like. Yeah, before. similar to a blade iron. Yeah, right. But absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean these things they I mean there's nothing further to really say. I mean clearly the the people that have purchased a, a set of these wedges yeah. have enjoyed them. Um, they they're they're beautiful to look at very simplistic but elegant in a way um, and then as we mentioned 48 52 56 60 degrees yep. on the loft um, yep. let's talk about the quick talk about the shafts and the, the availability well let's there. talk real quick about bounce oh yeah just real yeah. so the the 52 the 48 and the 52 have eight degrees of bounce okay. 56 has 12 and the 60 has 10 okay you know some people are going to go, wow, 10 degrees of bounce on a, on a 60. But, I mean, if you if you take a look at it with the trailing edge and the width of the sole, it really doesn't look like it's that no. much. And I'm going to tell you, what we were talking about earlier, Minnesota right now, yeah. you're very happy to have 10 degrees of bounce because right. it's a little soft out. Yep. It's, it's a little soft out there now. So that's where, you know, and it also I put those bounces on there so if you do want to change you know, if you want to add some loft, you want to take some loft off. There's still enough loft on these clubs to yeah to to take it to changing the changing the the, the loft angle and keep yeah. enough bounce on there where the bounce is still playable. Yeah, thing. you know, and we've we've got the traditional yep the, tra oh, the, right. tra the traditional that. handmade sticks ferrule that yeah, the ferrule that's got you know that's got the four rings of the colors of the logo yep yep so if you're if you're listening on the podcast there's the the four rings that you see on the lb1 irons too same right. thing right so the ferrule's right. got some orange green blue red yep kind of the the ferrule with those striped around yep. the outside of it very yeah. cool and then we went s300 okay you know there's a lot of wedges out there the Voki stock wedge is s200 a lot of companies put S3s, S4s in there. Um, I mean, honestly, from S2 to S4, all we're talking about is a little bit of weight difference and a little bit of stiffness. And honestly, if I took the shaft band off, you couldn't tell me if this no. is S2, S3, or S4. Right, right. Um, so I, I like the S3s in there. They're, they're basically what we would consider standard length for wedges. The 48 and the 52 are 35 and a half. The 56 is 35 and a quarter, and the 60 is at 35. Okay. So, yeah, very standard and very kind of standard. stock across the yes. industry. 63, 63 on the lie, so they're, they're okay. just like the irons. They're about a degree flatter yeah, yeah. Than, than the industry, probably a little bit closer to companies like Mizuno and Strixon. I was going to say. Um, I, I, yeah. I'm a, I think the world's worst thing that somebody can do is have wedges that are too upright mm -hmm. because you're predetermining that golf shot. 
first of all, I got a golf shaft in there that doesn't bend much. Now I've made a very upright lie angle. Well, where's that? Where's this thing going? I mean, it's going left. Yeah. I mean, and with a wedge, you don't want to predetermine it. How do you get yourself to hit a little soft touch shot if that club is way too upright? Yeah. You know, or how do I stand out there with a 48 or a 52 and try to hit something from 100, 105, 110 yards and, and flight it correctly? So I would much rather have the wedges a little bit flatter. You know, most great players that I've seen over the years building golf clubs for them, they get their lie angle to at the nine iron to whatever it is, whether they won 63, 62, 64. And then the rest of their, the pitching wedge and the rest of their wedges are at that same line angle. So really? essentially they're a little bit flatter to the set. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, and there's clearly a method to the madness, right? So. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. The, 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 there's method to, method to the madness and the simplicity. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Well, yeah. I mean, I just, you know, you're trying to make a golf, again, you're trying to make a golf club that, that when somebody grabs it and hits it and goes, wow, that feels really good. That feel, why does that feel, why does that feel solid? Yeah. Well, to me, one, when you put it down, you're going to like the look of it. Two, when you hit it through the turf, you're going to like the feel of the sole. Yeah. And, you know, and then also you're going to feel the combination of the head and the shaft. You know, swing weights are a little bit, swing weights are a little bit heavier than some of the traditional. So, you know, we're around, D3 to D4 on the 48 and 52, and then we get to D5, maybe yeah. even D6 on the lob wedge, because it's feel. You know, yeah. a lot of wedges have gotten too light. You know, back in the day, wedges used to be sledgehammers. Oh, yeah. You know. I mean, you it, picked it, up an old one, you know. Well, it's just... I'll tell you, when, when I first went to Wilson and you were looking at spec sheets, then the spec sheets for, spec sheets for a, a Wilson sand wedge the swing weight was D7 to E0. Wow. E. I e. Been, I don't think I've seen E in any club for No. It was D7 years. to E0 because you know what? You're 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 splashing it yeah, out of there. You want some you want some feel. Now was that a little too heavy? Probably a little bit too heavy. <laughs> but but that's what the traditional that's what the traditional yeah. sand wedge swing weight was back then. Yeah. To me, eh, you know, maybe a few companies have gotten a little light. Yeah, sure. You know, but you look at tour players, most of the time, depending on whatever their set is, their wedges tend to be two, three swing weights heavier than... Right, which, yeah, that's going to give you the, the more control and you're not, you know... Well, and you're hitting partial them. shots. Yeah, and a lot of times, most players are hitting yeah. not full swings. And yeah, and if I'm going in a bunker, man, I, you know... You don't want a super light club while you're no. digging in for a bunker shot. No, so. if I'm if I if I'm trying to get it if I'm trying to get it out of there, I, I, you know what? I want something with some mass on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, the LB1 wedges you can get them on SecondSwing.com. You can contact our friend James Tracy, who's getting <laughs> a little too much love, I think, for this podcast. <laughs> we I don't think we've mentioned it before on the show. So, James, uh, no, but he and the, the the customer service team will do a great job getting your wedge yep. set together. Um, and then, of course, I'm also going to plug your Instagram, at uh, lbobka, where you can follow, yep. and he's resharing almost every day. He's got people sending them pictures of playing the wedges throughout the country, throughout the world. So right. uh, very cool to see that and to right. see that also if you get a set of wedges, you'll see where else they're being played. Um, yeah, and you also get a chance to see a few other prototype things that are yeah, working yeah. on he too. Yeah, he, so. he, he drops the, the teasers, if you will, on yeah. his Instagram. Yeah. So. I'm not sure what else is coming in the future, or maybe not in the future. Who knows? I don't know what else maybe, is. Maybe another flat stick. Okay, maybe another putter. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think the the Instagram followers yeah. have seen it already. Okay. So yeah, um, yeah, that that's coming pretty soon. But you know, one of the reasons I do that though is you know I just want to let everybody know that you know I I don't design something, and we don't decide to sell it without me making sure that it's perfect oh yeah that i've that i've spent some time uh access to a lot of really really good players um let them hit it and you know i always make sure i always make sure that it that it is it is tested before it ever comes out oh, because yeah. at this point you know one there you know 
hey, we don't have we don't have a timeline and handmade sticks for for when you know our next launch is going to be. You know, yeah. not every two years, every year, or whatever. So it's really it's you know when the product's ready, the product's ready, and, mm -hmm. and we're going to bring it out. And um, yeah, it's been a it's been a uh, it's been really good. You know, we got some great people on there between you know. Goodwood Putters and Lamont Man and Clay Long and Tad Moore and you know we it, it's it's been a lot of fun to make to make some products and uh, yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna keep plugging along. I love it. I love it. Well, stay tuned to SecondSmith.com. Check out what's coming from Handmade Sticks. Stay tuned to Larry's Instagram for more hints on the putters. But Larry, thank you for joining. A um, lot of really good stuff with the LB1 wedges and uh, it's been fun to see. The whole launch of them it's been really fun perfect and then if we get a lot of good response here we'll do we'll oh, do yeah. we'll do round two